my smoker. I also have a good old standard Weber kettle grill. I also have a good old standby Weber gas grill. Nothing beats a gas grill for last minute, come home from work, want to throw something on the grill and get it going fast than a gas grill. It may not have all of the nice flavor and all of the other smoke benefits of the other grills that you saw I have, but for fast, get it going, cook after meal, don't want a lot of muss or fuss and a constant temperature, hard to beat a gas grill. I've tried a lot of them. Uh, some of the cheaper ones from the big box stores. I spent quite a bit more money on this Weber Genesis after having the others rust out and break down in no time at all. Weber's, like any other thing mechanical, can have problems. They're just a lot fewer and farther between. This particular one, we've got a problem with my igniter. When I push the button, there's no spark. I can still get it lit by throwing uh, something like an uh, electronic match or something in here and getting it lit, but that's no fun. So today we're going to change this igniter and show you what there is to it. There's two types of igniters on these Weber grills. One is a mechanical. It looks very similar from the outside. You push down on it. It's a very hard switch and when the switch connects it's a big snap and you'll hear the spark go. This is a little easier to use. This is an electronic igniter and it's just basically push it. There's a little battery in there that throws the, the power, throws a spark and ignites the grill. In this case we've uh, checked the battery. The battery's fine. There's just still no spark. So we're going to change this igniter and show you what there is to changing an electronic igniter. Mechanical, probably very similar, but uh, you'll have to do that for yourself from the instructions. Once again, this is a Genesis, a Weber Genesis grill, electronic ignition. And let me warn you, if you go online or you go to the stores and look for uh, the igniter, be very careful and make sure you know which one you have because when I first went out all they carried was the electric the uh, mechanical and nobody really said there was any difference so I bought that thing come home look at it and said oh no went online to the Weber site even that one didn't show it I dropped them an email and then very quickly by the next morning I got an email telling me the proper part number I ordered it and then it came and today we're going to install that so Let's get going and get this grill going so I can cook my uh, dinner tonight. Okay, the first thing we have to do is at the push button, slide it off, put it to the side. I've already removed the battery out of this chamber. It's just a samber, standard AA battery. And as you'll see, there's uh, two little tabs here. And you can't see it on the camera, one on the other side. And so you can't, don't scrape everything, anything. I like to take a small piece of masking tape or something like that and just put down like that. So as I'm pushing in on it, like that, it comes right out. I'd already pulled the wires off of it. So they were just hanging here and our switch is out. Since we're going to replace both parts of the kit, one is the igniter and the other is the igniter electrode that goes into the burner, we have to remove this plate where all of the burners are. The way you do that is there's a Phillips screwdriver on the back, or a Phillips screw rather. Take that, excuse me, take that screw out put it to the side in the bag. We're going to pull the uh, three burners or knobs straight up. They'll come right off and they're all the same so there's no need to worry about keeping them straight. Set them to the side where they won't get lost. Then we're going to lift this from the back. Just kind of jiggle it out of its little nest there and set it to the side. We can then get to the inside of the burner assembly. As you can see, the igniter assembly will be right here and maybe in there pretty tough. So grab a little needle nose or something. Oh, this one came out pretty easy. And just pull your harness out. Then take your new harness that came with the kit 
kind of unwrap your wires, straighten out your wires. So they're not all tangled up here. And then very carefully slide it in. You'll see there's a, uh, let me get a pointer here. You can see there's a, uh, a little ledge there. It'll just slip under this ledge. It's a real easy install and the instructions emphasize just finger push, no tools or anything. So just make sure it's in under the uh, edges of the holder, which I'm having trouble doing. There we go. And then push until it stops. And there we go. Then route your wires over to the side. Grab the new clip that came with it. The other one may look fine, but as long as they included it, I'm going to go ahead and uh, pull the little black wire into one side, white wire into the other side, and then just get it out of the way over here and slip it in this way. And then just take your black and your white cable and lay, lay down like this and they'll be ready for the other portion. Now let's uh, replace the uh, cover. Now that we have it apart, I'm going to replace this with it where we can see this and then uh, it'll be a little easier to understand than doing it the normal way. Normally you can just leave this in and reach up underneath and slip this uh, igniter assembly uh, in, but I wanted to show you a couple important points. One is there's a heat shield. What is important is this is pointed towards the grill. This helps keep this uh, plastic assembly from getting hot. So it's important that when you slip this into your igniter hole right here, that the uh, heat shield is pointed backwards like that. Little ears on here will make it just snap into place. Then we'll push the wires into there and it's all set. We're going to slip this uh, in place, the little ears and tabs will catch there, remembering to put the heat shield, in this case downward, towards the grill. Push it in, there it is, the heat, the ears have caught, and that's all there's to it. Now we can replace our cover. Then we're going to replace the screw that went into the back. If it's a Phillips, so have that on hand from when you took it out and just snug it up. It's got a nice plastic washer, so it's not difficult. That's all there is to it. I'm going to show you how the wires are connected uh, using the old one rather than the new one. Since it's underneath, it's very awkward, hard to tape where it's, or video where it's anywhere near understandable. But on the bottom of the shield, you'll see two plug-ins like this. It's just a simple metal. Although the original factory one I have here, they're both black. On the replacement one I've got underneath, one is colored white, one is colored black. Just take the white wire, let's plug into the white plug, take the black wire, plug into the black plug, and your new switch is connected. That's all there is to that step. Next, I'm going to replace the three knobs to the different burners. Let's go straight in. You can feel when they're there. They're keyed a little bit, so you can tell, but they go in rather straightforward normally. That's if you can hold them straight as I do. There we go, and that's the igniter. And they're all in. Next, we're going to attach the uh, cap and the battery to the uh, I mean, uh, igniter. We can take our tape off since we don't need it anymore. We take our new uh, AAA battery. If I said AA before, forgive me, uh, I was wrong. It's a AAA. And what you want to be is make sure the positive side goes in first. That's the little knob end, not the base end, the knob end. That's the positive terminal. Drop it in and then simply push your knob right over the top of it. And you should hear a spark, and I do. Well, there you have it. It may not be your traditional gardening or cooking uh, episode, but uh, every once in a while, our grills, our equipment, whether it's a stove or in this case, a grill goes down. It's not always the best idea to sit around and wait till you get somebody else out here that you can pay 
to fix something. So it is related in my mind. Hopefully it was somewhat of a interest to you to see, number one, how easy it is and uh, how good and what place uh, gas grill has in the in the cooking arena. Even though uh, <clears throat> we may not think of the grill typically out of the summer uh, aspects, it's always something to think about for a good way to cook at the last minute. Uh, grilling is not just a summer activity, it's not just July 4th, it's a great way to do everything from the obvious, the steaks, the burgers, but have you ever tried a pizza on your grill? Have you ever grilled vegetables? This is all very good things for you to get out and try. Try something new, but most important, buy and eat local. Find your local producers, get that, throw it on the grill. Even in winter, yes, even those of you up north, I was raised in Minnesota, so don't tell me it's too cold out there, because I've grilled out there in Jan end of January, early February with snow, and I know that's the coldest week of of the year. So you Minnesotans let me know. I'd like to hear from everybody. What kind of things do you grill in the summer? Yes, this is a good time since it's cooling off. Get out there and give your grill some good uh, maintenance, but don't put it away for the winter, please. It's a great way to cook uh, some very interesting meals even in the middle of the, of the winter. So uh, get out there and grill some more. Till next time, thanks again. Steve Howard, Cook's Garden, South Texas. <music>